Tan, 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 sorry, uh, wrong galaxy. Although, if you think about it, both themes belong to tall, intimidating cake figures and mechanized black suits driven to extreme violence by the premature deaths of their loved ones. But that's totally a coincidence. Hello, YouTube. My name is Pat, and I am really good at watching movies. Today, I'm covering the latest incarnation of a franchise that's been rebooted more times than a second-hand laptop. This version isn't beginning or rising. It doesn't feature a pubescent partner or prominent nipples. Its primary claim is giving us a definitive take on its main character. That's because this isn't just any Batman, it's THE Batman. Matt Reeves' The Batman is set in a bleak metropolis where it's always nighttime and always raining. In fact, unless this Gotham's sewer system is the Grand Canyon, any citizen living in a garden apartment is essentially renting a swimming pool. The only thing less useful in Gotham than sunscreen appears to be its police force, which has been utterly put to shame by some shady dude in bulletproof pajamas. Gotham PD is understandably salty about their state of affairs, especially since one of their own is openly cooperating with Bat, so feeding him tips and uh, occasionally making him a plus one at crime scenes. I'll let you get the rest of the convoluted plot on your own and pivot instead to some quirks and nits that I wanted to pick. Subtlety is not in the Batman's vocabulary. Every instance of narration takes the form of indulgent emo poetry, which, paired with the fact that our eyeliner-inclined hero literally lives in the penthouse suite of a gothic cathedral, is clearly setting up a promotional partnership with Hot Topic. A thick veneer of angst saturates every scene like a... You know what? Scratch that. Saturates was terrible word choice, considering the one color that even makes so much as a cameo is red. Last, but certainly not least, I mean like the polar opposite of least, is the movie's runtime. Two hours and 56 minutes is roughly twice what the Batman could have clocked in at if every moment wasn't mercilessly milked to death. I'm honestly not sure which film had more false endings, The Batman or Return of the We- And GET IT ALREADY! Hearing all of that, you'd think I'd beaten the Batman to a bloody pulp, and that no hope remains for the people of Gotham. But the crazy thing is, overall, I like the movie. Sure, it's unflinching commitment to noir sensibilities and general reliance on a level of audience familiarity pigeonholes the film. What I'm saying is, a large flock of pigeons will still eat this thing up like it's a bag of fries spilled across a McDonald's parking lot. Robert Pattinson's turn at bat is commendable. While the material he got wasn't particularly diverse, he still managed to deliver a believable recluse haunted by grief, guilt, and the chronic lack of self-care. The supporting cast was solid as well, with special props to Paul Dano playing a screechy, masochistic incel, and Colin Farrell, who waddled the fine line between hilarious and menacing, like a true emperor. So, yeah, all right, all right. The verdict, was it too long? Yes. Was it fun? Also, yes. In a way that should work for most. I'm gonna give this one three pop kernels out of four. And maybe just a little less butter next time. Well, there's the house lights. If you like my shtick, stop by again sometime. Till then, it's been real.
na 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 na